Hey everybody, it's Joe with the Makerspace and I want to show you guys today a really cool project that you can do with our laser cutter here at the Makerspace. It is a really neat little picture puzzle that you can put your own picture into and all you need to do is provide your own picture and the rest of everything you need you can get right here at the Makerspace. Uh, so let me show you how to do that on the computer. So. We're looking right here at the Retina Engraved software that we're going to use, but before we do that, we need to get a file from Spol Full Spectrum Lasers website. Uh, I got this off of their blog and it's beginner lesson number two. And over here on the side right here, you're going to need to get uh, the picture frame. You don't need to provide the image, you can provide your own image. And you're going to want to download the PDF file of this because there's something wrong with their SVG. It's got more information in it and it messes with stuff. So go ahead and grab the PDF of that and it's fine. Ignore the rest of the instructions because they're outdated now that they've updated their software and then you just go into the Retina Engraved software. Uh, create a new project. So just hit plus and then go to where you downloaded that file and click and drag the puzzle frame PDF on there. So over here on the side with, with these layers here, uh, there is the raster information and the vector information. And for this one, we do not need the raster information. Just delete that and get rid of that layer. All we need is the vector information. Now I want to zoom in a little bit on this vector information so that we can take a look at it. And don't worry about the incompleteness. It, it's complete. I've checked it. It's fine. It works fine. Uh, for some reason, the screen is just not refreshing properly. But notice how we have three different colors of cuts. Now in the past, I've seen files with multiple colors of cuts and I haven't understood why they were doing that, but this project taught me why. The reason is you want that it to cut from the inside out and by making multiple different colors of cuts, you can control which one cuts first, which one cuts second, which one cuts third. So in this case, we want the pink to cut first. So notice over here, I'm rearranging it. The pink, the, the red, I suppose, to cut first, the yellow, the, the box around that to cut second, and the pink, which is the box that goes around the whole thing to cut third. And what we're gonna get with this, let me just zoom the whole thing, is we're gonna get a puzzle, we're going to get the puzzle being cut out and then we're going to get a frame around the puzzle that you then take and, and glue together to make a nice little frame for your puzzle pieces to sit into. So just like that, you can see I've moved some of them and there they are, you can see underneath them. But we're not done because we also need to bring in our own picture. So I'm going to grab a picture that I have. Okay, so here we are. Let's just resize this a little bit. This is a picture of myself and my very silly girls. Uh, I'm a bit, my life is a bit like little women in that regard. Uh, and so I really, I really enjoy this picture. I think it's cute. And so what we need to do is we need to take and rotate it. And if we hold down the shift key, we can rotate it by exact degrees, then shrink it down again, holding the shift key. So we keep the proportions right and put it in place so it basically sits right on top of the puzzle cut. And if you go outside of the cut area uh, for that orange or for that yellow just a little bit, it's actually not a big deal because what you can do is you can take that outside frame and flip it over and put it down in there. Now you will notice though that there's a little red section on the side here, right here. Let me zoom in and see if we can see this. Uh, Basically, it, it doesn't like having, it, it likes to have a little bit of buffer on the sides. So we're gonna select and grab everything and move it over just a little bit. This is the minimum amount of space. So you make sure that your material in the laser cutter will go around that just fine. Now let's talk about the settings over here for this picture. Uh, what power, what speed, that's determined by the material that you're using. And I'm gonna crank up the resolution on this one so it gets to be just a little bit darker. But the intensity, I think, is an interesting one. If you turn up the intensity, it will make the picture lighter. And if you're having trouble with the fine details showing up, you might want to increase the resolution, increase the power, and then also increase the intensity to make the picture lighter but make the details that show up 
darker. Now this is this is way too intense. Maybe just a little bit more intense for this one. I will have to test it out. Always test out your parts. You can make this smaller and test it on a far side of your print and make sure it's all good. And then let's click on our vector properties. Now, what settings do we use for our vector engraving? Well, it very much depends on the material that we're using. For this one, I used cardboard, so it was 85, uh, or 80, 85, 85, and you do that again for all of them. The multiple colors are just so that we can repeat the process and control what cuts when. But I did this project in wood as well. Let's go take a look at the other camera so I can show you the result of this. In wood, I had a really hard time getting the engraving to overpower the cutting. The cutting just got so dark and so scorchy that it just overpowered the engraving no matter how high resolution or how high powered I did it and I wasn't really pleased with the effect. And this, this is the risk that you run when you're running a cut through an engraving is that the cut will overdo it. Now, it is probably a result of the fact that we're using cheap plywood for this one, and if you brought in your own wood and it were a little bit higher quality, we might be able to cut it without getting it so black and scorchy, but this cheap plywood, we just can't make it not scorch. And so I don't recommend doing this project in plywood. It worked okay in cardboard, but then you're making a cardboard puzzle. I'm going to give it a try this time in acrylic, so I'm going to check the settings on the board real fast and input those settings into uh, Retina Engrave and then run it on the cutter. Okay, so looking at those settings for acrylic, all we have to do is drop the speed to 15, leave the power current at 100 and the passes at 1, and that's all we have to do and we're good to go. So everything else from here is just loading up the material, making sure the water cooler's on, uh, running the perimeter, and going with it. I love this project because once you get the cutting, you don't have to design anything, you can just input your own picture and it makes a really, really neat process. I forgot though, since I'm doing this one on acrylic, I'll need to invert the picture uh, because acrylic cuts in white and so I need to invert the picture so it doesn't do it a little bit funny. I'm gonna return my intensity down to zero because I don't know how this is gonna work. I'll do some testing first, but then I'm gonna go ahead and run this. And that's really all there is to it to this project. Just import the frame and then bring in your own picture and get your settings done properly. Oh, I need to make sure of my setting for rastering acrylic. Yeah, we wanna drop the speed down to 50 for this, perfect. I think 100% will work. I think I've done it at 100%, but uh, just to be sure, I'm gonna drop it down to 50. So there we go. That project is ready to go. So there you go, a fun little project that you can do. It's a great little personalized project. It looks really great, and, and I think that it's a very neat gift that is good for, you know, whatever you're getting gifts ready for. But uh, it works great in cardboard, it doesn't work so great in plywood, and if you want to see how it works in acrylic, well, I'll be starting that up as soon as I'm done with this video, so you'll have to come by the Makerspace and ask to see it. So I hope to see you at the Makerspace, maybe bring your own picture, and if you're not already set up to use the laser cutter, we'll get you set up to do that in a little bit, and then you can make your own really cool projects. But that's all for today. I want to thank you very much for watching, and remember, safety first. See you at the Makerspace.